This is the video for Module 9 from Stathway. Now, we're still going to be looking at confidence intervals and hypothesis testing as we did in Module 8. The difference here is we're still looking at proportions, but we're looking at two populations as opposed to Module 8, where we were just examining one population. For two populations, we always do a comparison of the population proportions using differences, the difference of the two. Okay, so the first thing is when two populations are independent, the mean of the, all the possible P1 hats minus P2 hats is just the difference of the true population proportions. Now, it turns out that the difference of the two statistics has greater variability than the variability of either individual statistic. In other words, the standard error or the standard deviation of the two populations combined is larger than the standard deviation of either individual population. And this right here is the formula for the standard deviation of the two populations. Now, of course, we normally don't know the true values of the population proportions. So, you're going to notice right here that when we construct a confidence interval, the margin of error is the z-critical value. And now, we don't really know the true values of p. That's what we're trying to estimate. So here, this is going to give us the standard deviation, right here, the square root using the hat values. Now, the standard deviation is going to be used to construct a confidence interval. The confidence interval is the interval that we think captures the difference of P1 minus P2 the difference of population proportions. That's how we always use two populations, the differences. Now, in order to construct a confidence interval, normality must be met. And so, for both populations, not just one, NP has to be bigger than or equal to 10, and one minus P has to be bigger than or equal to 10. Now, of course, since we normally don't know the values of P, then each populus, each sample of the po in each population should have at least 10 successes and 10 failures. And the way we construct the confidence interval is we take the difference of the hats minus the margin of error, difference of the hats plus the margin of error. Now again, this confidence interval is going to be used to estimate the true difference of the P's, P1 minus P2. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Now, recall from Module 8 that the Gallup organization conducted a poll to determine the proportion of adults in the U.S. who were concerned about the effects of global warming. The following year, the organization conducted the poll again. This time, it found a smaller proportion of adults in the U.S. concerned about the effects of global warming. Now, the criteria for approximate normality are soon to be satisfied. So, in the first poll, the proportion of adults in the U.S. concerned about global warming was found to be P1 hat is 0.70. Okay, now actually that's a PI hat for initial year. The second poll, that's the following year. PF hat was 0.50. So now, we have to calculate, first of all, the standard error. Now, the sample sizes for the two poles were 47 and 63. This is going back to the example from Module 8. Okay, So the sample sizes were 47 and 63. And the initial p hat and the following p hat, those values were also gotten from Module 8. So right now, we'll just assume those values are true. So in order to construct the um, standard error, 
okay, the estimated standard error. We use the p hat values and we get 0 0.092. Now, if this is a 95% interval, we're going to multiply the standard error here, 0 0.092 times the z critical value, which is 1.96, and we get a margin of error here of 0.18. So you take the difference of the hats, 0.7 minus 0.50 minus the margin of error, difference of the hats, 0.70 minus 0.50 plus the margin of error. And that gives us um, a confidence interval of 0.02 to 0.38. So what this means is we're 95% confident that PI minus PF lies somewhere between 0.02 and 0.38. Now, looking at this confidence interval, one question might be, is it possible PI equals PF? Well, no, that probably wouldn't happen because if the two population proportions were equal, the difference would be zero. Zero is not in the interval. So it's highly unlikely that the two population proportions are equal. Now, since all the numbers in the confidence interval are positive, how can you get PI minus PF to be positive? The PI has to be larger than the PF. Remember, the order of subtraction is PI minus PF. So again, since all the numbers in the confidence interval are positive, this lends us to believe PI is larger than PF. For hypothesis testing, the alternative hypothesis is one of the following. Either P1 is less than P2, P1 is bigger than P2, or P1 is not equal to P2. The null hypothesis is always equality. P1 equals P2, or equivalently, P1 minus P2 is equal to zero. So, Let's look at an example here. In the U.S., we have been hearing about the effects of global warming, but we're interested in whether there have been any change in people's opinion about global warming. In two consecutive years, 2010-2011, the Pew Research Center conducted polls to find the proportion of adults in the U.S. who were concerned about the effects of global warming. The results of the two consecutive polls seem to indicate there had been a change in public opinion over this period of time. Suppose we decide to test the claim that the proportion of adults in the U.S. who were concerned about the effects of global warming changed between 2010 and 2011. Not that one was bigger than the other, not that one was less than the other, they're different. That would be this type of alternative hypothesis, the two-tailed test, not equal. So, we gather two samples, first for 2010, and the number of successes, there were 233 out of 359. Those were how many people were concerned about global warming. The following year, 194 out of 352 were concerned about global warming. Let's run the hypothesis test now at the 1% significance level. That's alpha's 0.01. So, the null hypothesis is always equality. PI equals PF. Again, the I is initial year, F is the following year. The alternative hypothesis, PI is not equal to PF. Remember, we're claiming that they're different. So, is normality satisfied? Yes, for the initial year, there were 233 successes, 126 failures the following year. 194 successes, 158 failures. Now, for the initial year, PI hat is 233 out of 359.649. PF hat was 194 out of 352.551. And the difference of the hats, 0.65 minus 0.55, that's if we round to two decimal places, we get 0.10. Okay, now, when we compute the estimated standard error, for hypothesis testing, we don't use the hats to get the standard error. Since the null hypothesis is saying that the population proportions are equal, right here, and we always assume the null hypothesis is true, 
then that says we have two populations with the same proportion. So we could sort of think of them as similar populations. So we can come up with a pooled proportion. That's where we think of the two as the same. And we count up the number of successes for the two populations together, divided by the sample size of the two populations, which gives us a p-bar. This is called p-bar. This is the pooled proportion. This is the proportion for successes if you think of the two populations as merged, 0.601. So now, the standard error is we don't use the hat values. We use the p-bar values. And again, we only use this in hypothesis testing, not in confidence intervals. So here, the standard deviation, standard error for the pooled population, p-bar, 1 minus p-bar over n1, p-bar, 1 minus p-bar over n2. 0.0367. Okay, now this is what you have to remember right here. For module 9, the z value, why can we eliminate this right here? Because in the null hypothesis, we're assuming pi equals pf. That means that the difference is zero. We don't need that. So the z value in module 9 is the difference of the hats over the estimated standard deviation. Difference of the hats over estimated standard deviation, 2.6. Okay, next, remember this is a two-tailed test because we have the not equal to. So you can either get the area on the left. This, If you do it on the left, it would be normal CDF, negative 1E99, comma, minus 2.67. Or you can get the the probability, the area on the right. Remember, they're symmetric, it's the same area. So if you do the area on the right, it's normal CDF, 2.67, comma, 1E99. Either case, you'll get the same area, 0 0.0038. But you have to double it. It's a two-tailed test. We want both areas, 0 0.0076. Now, the p-value is less than the alpha value, so p-value is low. The null hypothesis has got to go. We accept the alternative. So the data does support the claim that the proportion of adults in the U.S. who were concerned about global warming was different in the successive years.